All right, Saturday, August 17th. Let's read some Bible. We're on the second book of Kings, chapter 3 and chapter 4. We'll read today. We'll start with the prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, God, for the Saturday. In your name we pray, Amen. <laughs> Chapter 3. Now, Joram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel and Samaria in the 18th year of Jer Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. And he reigned 12 years, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father and like his mother. For he put away the statue of Baal, which his father had made. Nevertheless, he clung to the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin. He did not turn aside from them. Now, Misha, king of Moab, was a sheep master, and he used to bring up to the king of Israel a hundred thousand of fat lambs and a hundred thousand rams with their wool. But it came to pass when Ahab was dead, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. And the king and King Joram went out of Samaria at the same time and numbered all Israel. Then he went on and sent to Jer to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Come with me. Let us go to war against Moab and Jehoshaphat. Come, let us go to war against Moab. And Jehoshaphat said, I will go up as you go. My people as your people and my horses is your horses. And he said to him, Which way shall we go up? And he answered, By the way of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom and traveled seven days' journey. And there was no water for the army and for the people who were with them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, truly for this the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a... Is there not here a prophet of the Lord, that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who used to pour water on the hands of Elisha. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and to the prophets of your mother. And the king of Israel said to him, Truly for this the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Then Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts live before whom I stand, where it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. I would not look toward you nor see you. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass... When the minstrel played, the hand of the Lord came upon him, upon him. And he said, Thus says the Lord, Let this valley be made full of cisterns. For thus says the Lord, You shall not see wind, neither shall you see rain, yet this valley shall be filled with water, which you may drink, both you and your cattle and your beasts. And this is but a small thing in the sight of the Lord. You will deliver the Moabites also into your hands, and you shall destroy every fortified city and every choice city, and shall fell every good tree, and pollute all the springs of the water, and mar every, and mar every good piece of the land of land which, with stones. And it came to pass in the morning when the sacrifice was offered, that behold, there came water by the way of Edom, and the land was covered with water. And when all the Moabites saw that the kings were come to, up to fight against them, they called out all that were able to to gird themselves with the sword and stood on the border. And they rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone upon the water, and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, This is blood, the kings are surely slain. And they have killed one another, now therefore go up to, to the spoil. And when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites so that, so that they fled before them. But they continued attacking them, and they devastated Moab. And they destroyed the cities, and on every good piece of land cast every man his stone and filled it. And they polluted every spring of water and felled all the good trees, till the stones in the city of the capital city were, demolished, were left demolished. And the slinger surrounded it and destroyed it. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore 
for him, he took with him 700 men and drew swords to break through to the king of Edom, but he could not. Then he took his eldest son, who was to reign in his stead, and offered him as a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel, and the kings departed from Moab and returned to their own country. Chapter 4. Now a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor has come to take my two sons to be his bondmen. And Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in that house? And she said, Your handmaid has nothing in the house except a pot of oil. Then he said to her, Go borrow for yourselves vessels from the houses of all the neighbors, even empty vessels borrow not a few. And then go in and shut the door upon you and upon your sons, and pour out into all these vessels, and the vessels, and the vessel which is full bring up to me. So she went in from him and then entered her house and shut the door upon herself and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And when the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me more mess vessels. But her son said to her, there are no more vessels and the oil stopped. Then she came and told the prophet of God and, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt and live you and your sons on what is left over. And it came to pass on the morrow, Elisha, went and came to Shiloh, where, where was a wealthy woman, and she constrained him to eat food, so that whenever he passed by, he, he turned in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Behold, now I perceive that the prophet of God is a holy man who, possess, who passes by us continually. Let's make for him a little upper room, and lest, let us set for him there a bed and a table and a chair and a candlestick so that when he comes to us he shall turn in there and it happened on a certain day he came there and he turned in to the upper room and lay there and he said to Gehazi his servant call this Shilomite woman and when he had called her she stood before him and he said to her behold you have shown us all this respect what is to be done for you is there anything to be spoken on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? And she answered, I dwell among my own people quite well. Then he said, What shall I do for her? And Gehazi said to him, Verily, she has no son, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said to her, About this season you will be with child and shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my lord, O prophet of God, do not lie to your handmaid. And the woman conceived and bore a son at the season that Elisha had said to her, She was with child. Now when the child had grown, he went out on a certain, on a certain day to his father, who was with the reapers. And he said to his father, O oh, my head, my head. And his father said to, to a servant, Take him up and carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the prophet of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called on, and she called to her husband and said, send me one of the servants and one of the asses that I may go hastily to the prophet of God. And he said to her, why will you go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath, but the Shalomite gave orders and they settled an ass for her and she and she said to her servant drive fast do not stop to dismount me unless i tell you so she went to the prophet of god at mount carmel and when the prophet of god saw her afar off he said to gehazi his disciple behold there is a Sh there is the shilomite woman there is the shilomite run now to meet her and say to her is it well with you is it well with your husband is it well with your child and she answered is it is well and when she came to the prophet of God to the mountain, <clears throat> and when she came to the prophet of God to the mountain, she caught hold of his feet, but Gehazi came near to remove her. And the prophet of God said to him, Let her alone, for her soul is in bitter anguish, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. Then she said, Did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say to you, Do not ask a son for me? 
Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up your loins and take my staff in your hand and go. If you meet any man, do not salute him. And if any man salutes you, do not answer him. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. And he arose and, and followed her. And Gehazi went on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore he returned to meet Elisha and told him, saying, The child is not awake. And Elisha was come into the house. Behold, the child was dead and lying upon his bed. He went in therefore and shut the door upon the two of them and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched upon and he stretched himself upon him and the flesh of the child became warm. Then he returned and walked to and fro in the house and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. And Elisha called Gehazi and said to him, call this Shalomite. So he called her, and when she was come to him, he said to her, Take up your son. And she went in and fell at his feet, and bowed herself to the ground, and took up her son, and went out. And Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in the land, and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said to his disciple, Set, set on the great pot, and cook pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one of them went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine in the field and gathered from it his lap full of wild gourds and came and put them into the pot of pottage for he did not know what they were. So he poured out for the men to eat and as they were eating of the pottage they cried out and said, O prophet of God, there is death in the pot and they could not eat of it. But he said, take meal and cast it into the pot. And he said, pour out for the people and they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. And there came a certain man from the city of giants and brought the prophet of God bread and the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley and new wheat rubbed from their ears in, in a cloth. And he said, give the people, give it, give to the people that they may eat. And the servants and his servants said, what should I set the, should, what should I set this before a hundred men? And Elisha said to him again, give them to the people that they may eat, for thus is the Lord that shall eat and shall leave some. So he said it before them, and they did eat and left some according to the word of the Lord. Chapter 5, the second book of Kings. We'll begin that one tomorrow. And with that, we will close with a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. God, you are the best. In your name we pray, Amen. Peace.